these um, little by little so that they can um, come into it. Um, it is, it is um, kind of difficult to do, but to, they're doing it little by little um, within US history, within theology, within um, civics classes, et cetera. We've had teachers come in and do these types of activities and they can really see a change in the students and how they are um, building things and putting things together and moving through that design process to learn the concepts that they need to. So we help teachers um, come up with activities that they can do to help them become more facilitators rather than um, just lecturers in the classroom. And we also help them with um, educational technology, different types of um, technology that they can use in the classroom to kind of help them um, use all the resources that we have. So within this space in the Innovation Center, we have um, two sides to the space. And inside the space, we have a vast range of different types of tools that we'll show you um, that the students use when they come in here or they can use when they come in here. Um, some of the those courses that are considered STEAM based courses, um, we call those um, Okay, we have robotics for middle school, um, STEAM explorations, which kind of lets them explore um, how to apply um, different sciences or different um, subjects to engineering and being able to move through the design process. We have introduction to engineering design, uh, principles of engineering and the senior level um, in uh, engineering design and development. We also have a very great computer science program uh, we're actually bringing in an alum. He's going to be a new teacher next year here at Belen, and he will be teaching some of the computer science classes. His background is in robotic engineering. Um, and so, and honors anatomy is also a STEAM course, even though it is considered a science class, the way that it is taught is more design-based. They're not so much learn memorizing um, names of muscles or what the muscles look like. They're applying it, they're doing the physiology, they're learning what the different muscles and different parts of the body, what they do based off of how they function together. So those are the courses that are considered STEAM based courses um, that we house in here, except for the computer science, which is in the computer lab. But we're, our goal is to make STEAM something that exists in all classrooms. And going from there, we want to expand into the A of STEAM. So A stands for art. And we already have a robust art program, but we want to make it even stronger. So we want to bring visual engineering programs that let students use the modern technology to make film, to make um, design, marketing, and things like that. Um, I'm getting an echo in my ears, so I'm going to take these out for a sec. Okay, sorry, I was getting an echo because I'm listening on a different device. Um, so going from there. We want to build those programs out. We want to bring more technical skills to the students within the arts program. So doing the traditional and the technical as well, because bringing high art skill to those technical forums will let you make better product. Um, and then this also ties in entrepreneurship and business as well, because these engineering design class at the senior level, the students are expected to build a project from the beginning to the end. So it's not just a bunch of small projects like a normal school year. They choose a design project with a special design problem and using that design problem, what they do is they, um, they have to find out if it's marketable. They have to find out if there are patents that already exist that use this technology. They have to make sure that they're not making something that already exists to the T. Um, they have to make sure that they can procure the materials. What is the actual flow of manufacturing it? And theoretically come up with that whilst actually making a prototype. And then along with this, they have actual preliminary design review, critical design review, and final design reviews that are presented not only to myself, but ideally to a panel of alumni, to a panel of stakeholders within the school so that they can see what these students are presenting. And these students not only are presenting a project that may just be technical and maybe something, but they present it to the general public to see if it's actually viable and students can get feedback on the presentation skills, which we all know are very important. Um, then just moving on from the curriculum, we also have clubs that we run in this space. And we have two general STEAM-based clubs, but any club is welcome to come and use this space for their needs. So we have 
a middle school robotics team and a high school robotics team, which are combined into one robotics club. And we have a STEAM club. So the robotics teams are competition-based robotics. In the middle school, we use uh, the platform called VEX IQ, which I'm sure everybody here is familiar with Legos. I don't know if you guys are familiar with VEX, but think Lego robotics. Um, but that they just stick together and the kids can build and produce parts like that. And then at the high school level, we're going from VEX and we're switching to FIRST Robotics, which is a different league. So think like National League versus American League. It's the same thing, but different. Um, they use, um, uh, they can actually manufacture parts. They can machine parts. They can do that versus the league that we were before that you had to use standardized parts to make your robots. And then they get the challenge and they can machine 3D print and use all the equipment that we have to make a new robot. But not only that, in that league, they have to do community outreach. So they have to find some sort of outreach project that they have to do. They have to build their business plan. They also have to build their budgeting. They have to do every, everything as a team down to even creating a brand, um, a company brand for the team. And each team has its own individual brand that they use to showcase their things at their competitions. So. We have a very robust robotics program. And then the STEAM club, which Dr. Da Silva runs, is a project-based club that is kind of client-based. So if someone in the school require, needs something, they can come to the club and the students can help design it and get that client feedback immediately. So they come, they, bring, they, they present it to the client, the client gives them feedback on what the project actually is um, and what their current design is. They say yay or nay, and then they continue or they change the design as needed. So we're trying to have the students build real world experiences within the school already so that once they head out and they go to that first internship, they shadow that first doctor, they work with that first um, company, or they just get into college and they get their first class that is not just a sit down, study and take a test class, they're already prepared to handle that. And I think we can start. Yeah, yeah so. so we're going to take you on a little tour of the um, Innovation Center space. Um, so I'm going to spotlight Peter's, here we go. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So as you walk into the Innovation Center, if you have not had a chance to come in here, um, once you walk in, you notice that there is on the right hand side, um, one of the sides, um, we can hold classes in here simultaneously thanks to these um, hexagonal tiles up at the top um, that help with a little bit of soundproofing. Um, over here we have um, our desks. Then on this side, it is, um, we obviously have the space was designed to have a collaboration space, to have a, um, space where they can come together, come up with their designs. Um, over there in the back, you have the um, couches surrounding a TV so that as they are working on their projects, uh, they can talk to their team, kind of present to their team um, and present to, let's say one of the instructors and um, they can take in that um, space there's um, all of that that can happen there. So there is that collaboration that we want the students to focus on. So we have these couches over here. Um, we do have um, a set of Milwaukee tools. So these are the tools that the students use or can use in the space after some safety training. Um, so we have those open here. We have uh, these Mac computers, which have um, Adobe Illustrator, they have Photoshop, et cetera, all within them. Our 3D printers, we have four of them on this side, two of the smaller ones, uh, two of the larger ones. Then we have um, also a more, I guess, professional um, 3D printer over here as well that can handle more specific types of prints. Now at all of these um, tables that we have, they are butcher block tables and they do have um, the um, bin, garbage bins already automatically placed into the tables to make it easier when the students are working on projects, they can kind of um, like throw anything um, out of there. These right here are some of the projects that the um, engineering students created. Um, so here they were building an automata um, so they had to design the cams to create the motion that they needed it to. And 
so it works like that. Over here um, in principles of engineering, they were working on hydraulic arms. Hydraulic arms, um, based off of after learning all the concepts for that. So we have all of these projects. Yeah. We have projects from some other courses. So US history has was in here. Um, they were designing, um, they were doing a little steam activity, kind of going through different events in history. Um, more Milwaukee tools, um, batteries, since they are battery powered. And um, we have over here the, um, for the anatomy class, they work on these mannequins all year. So they have these mannequins and they start building out um, some of the muscles, some of the organs onto those uh, mannequins as they learn about the different systems or how they function. It gives them um, a easier way to kind of see how to place different muscles and how they function together. This right here is a steam club project that um, designed for the WBLN studio. Um, it is mostly done, but the students designed this themselves from scratch and they used all the tools that they needed to be able to finish this off. Now in this backspace, we have all of the, um, I guess the cutting tools is what you would say. Um, we have the miter saw, uh, table saw, we have a CNC machine. So the students on top of um, learning how to and like the safety of how um, these things work. They also learn the software that they need for being able to create designs that they can cut using the CNC machine. So this back here is kind of like our woodworking um, area. And we're still continuing to build up this area um, to get if we need more saws, if we need um, as students need different tools, then we'll continue to um, get those tools. We have over here um, kind of a space where the students can meet as a team if they need to talk things out. Um, we also have the robotics field. So this is the high school robotics field. Um, this is, it's housed on this side. Oh, let me grab my computer, make sure. All right, so we do have a lot of TVs in here for the purpose of being able to, um, as the students are presenting or as we need them um, based off of just student need, they'll use those different TVs or will use those different TVs to um, kind of show presentations to them or whatever it is that they need. So again, we have another collaboration space here where students can um, kind of talk it out, talk with their team, see what it is that they need to create. We have um, on top of the Macs, we also have uh, PC laptops in here, which is where they have all of the um, Autodesk, um, the, all, all of the Autodesk software. So um, students are also learning how to use AutoCAD to be able to use the laser cutters that we have in the back. Um, so this space is very similar to, this space is very similar to um, the one on the other side. It has the same uh, sort of layout. This space is a little bit smaller and it houses the um, robotics, the middle school robotics field for the um, robotics class that we have. So the students build out those arms, the robotic arms in the class, and then they will um, design from there. Now, here we also have some projects from some STEAM projects from um, art history. So they were also um, in here doing different types of projects. So here they were working on uh, mobiles and stabiles. So working on that, um, moving through the engineering design process to create those. And then in, we have two more 3D printers over here. We also have a little bits um, pro library, which helps with learning um, circuitry and the electrical engineering aspect. So based off of the types of projects that students might work on, um, then they have that, that they can work with. And then,
I think the audio cut out. Yeah, the audio cut out on that one. Can you hear me over here? Yep. Okay. So continuing from there, let's just try to do this as seamless as possible. This is our second machining room and we have two laser cutters that were kindly donated by one of our alumni. Um, they are both, they have both pretty good beds and they can cut through things, um, wood, they can etch and they can also raster, which basically is a laser cutting version of printing on the devices and the students can use these for projects and other people can use these for projects as well. Um, we also have, this is our, just our electrical equipment. We also have a server stack back here um, and networking. We have two crickets that students can use for more um, fabric designing. So they can use vinyl cutting, they can do um, cardboard cutting, they can do several different things like that. And again, these are just works in progress. We're thinking of developing out these rooms as well. So um, we're getting some sewing machines so that the students can actually work on some fabric projects. And we have one student that just graduated from the robotics team uh, that is going into fashion design as well as using technical aspects of that that he learned within the robotics classes um, and club. And for those of you that were in basketball, we actually have a pretty good view of the gym as well. So it's always interesting having the students watch what the other students are playing and sometimes get very excited about that as well. We have also a few more Mac computers on this side. And I believe that is the entire space. So it's a pretty great space. And as always, we are a Jesuit school. So let me pan over a little bit slowly over here. And we have different Jesuit priests that have had um, effects on science and engineering throughout history. Um, I know that every time Father Willie gives a tour, he talks about uh, Christopher Clavius because there is a crater named after him in Mars. And recently within the past year and a half, they discovered water in that crater. So I know Father Willie loves talking about that one. And he also loves talking about Ferdinand Verbius in this corner right here, who is credited to have designed the first automobile. So, or the first moving vehicle. Um, I did a little bit of research on it yesterday and there's contention as to exactly what that is. But yeah, that is the Roberto Sigo Sueta Innovation Center. Um, the lobby has also been remodeled to match the new upstairs space. And both of them are connected through a staircase in the middle that you may have seen at the beginning. But I believe that concludes our tour. You can see, oh, okay. So it looks like we had some technical difficulties here. So we're gonna make a few changes. To one second. There's the screen. All right. Or okay. While we're figuring that out, um, I can you hear? No. Oh yeah. One second. Mm -hmm. We disconnect right now. Now it's working. All right, wait. Well, can you say something to check the audio on this end? Wait, I think we, I think we got it. Hello. Work. Yeah. Okay. No, we got this end working. Okay. Perfect. All right, so we are open to questions. All right. And Peter is still in the spotlight. Oh. Yeah. I need a row. There you go. Uh, that was amazing. That was yeah. very impressive. Lab. That was fun, uh, f phenomenal, fantastic. Wow. Uh, and, and thank you, Dr. De Silva. Thank you, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Perez. Uh, I'm Oscar Bustillo with Beams, so uh, Arts Entertainment Media. Um, and I, I just I just quickly jotted down a few questions. Just wondering, just the nuts and bolts of it all, right? Okay, so how are the teams put together? 
or the like 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 project? like you say you like like you put together like project teams with uh okay. so how how are the teams assembled i'm just curious so when it comes this answer is going to differ by class okay um, I'm going to assume that the original question was directed to the senior design class. So the teams are put together in that course um, by interest on projects. So okay, there okay. is a big brainstorming session at the beginning. Each student has to come up with 20 ideas, uh, 20 novel ideas. Um, and then they whittle it, they go through a rigorous design process to whittle it down to one, two, three, four ideas. And then if some students resonate with a certain idea, that's how they actually choose which one they're going to work on. Um, wow, and then they okay. have to justify why that idea is an actual idea with an actual presentation. They can't just be like, okay, this is my idea. We're going to build a skateboard and we're going to go on with that. There has to be reasoning behind it. Right, right. Um, thanks. Uh, if I may, just have a few more along the same lines. Um, how big is each team then? Uh, depends. Okay, so in that course, three to four. Three to four, the, the, okay. The, the ideal team size. If okay, cool. If okay. Class, three is my cap. Okay. So it's going to be the fourth student that is not doing anything and twiddling his thumbs while he stares at the wall. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And, and, and so three, on hmm. average, three. three, three on average is the max that we try to go with our group so that they can actually, every student actually participates and their input is taken into consideration and they work and there isn't just the one boy that's exactly floating around exactly exactly and and then i i think i might be done i think um so each project is a semester's length basically or is it a full year's length depending on the the complexity of and the am, ambition the ambitious nature of the power again that answer depends on the course so in okay design, okay that's an annual project so that annual project, project. Beginning. it can be changed but usually if it's changed, it's one of those same things that it's kind of like at a company. If you're going to drop a project, you got to tell me why we put in this investment and why you're right. dropping this project. So these um, are big projects. I'm sorry to interrupt. But these are like, <laughs> okay. This was our okay. first year. I don't think we had one group get close to completing their project, but we didn't have any. So ideally next year, we'll have at least one group complete their projects. And I believe okay. next year it's going to be a small class. So it's going to be easier to focus because the level of project is diverse. We had one group trying to make a website for blend sports. We had one group trying to make a aftermarket add-on to their car so that they could have the safety detection system that no, um, more modern cars had. Wow. Uh, because that student has a G-Wagon, so he wanted to make his G-Wagon safer. What, that's what okay. you're um, We had one group work on a filtering system for um, a portable AC that's affordable. Wow. So okay. as you can see, the topics that are covered in the course are not the same so as a as an educator you kind of have to spread yourself up that's where alumni or um community members come in so if someone has a specialization in one of these topic areas help is greatly appreciated so that frankly i don't have to learn 17 more subjects while i'm working on a phd and teaching more courses at the same time so um it's it's very helpful having people that know what they're doing in our alumni base to be able to come in and help our students currently like 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 on a mentorship base uh, level, but okay, okay, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess I, I'll jump in there because um, you know I as you know at the beginning when I said you know one of the motivations was to have that dialogue of how can alumni be of service. So I guess you threw out one idea, but how how would we know what it is that you need, or how would you see that kind of working? You know that that relationship uh, playing out. So I'm going to focus on that level of course as well, because I think this that one is the most flexible and the most real world of the examples, but every course has things like this. So um, in the case of that class, at some point, and I spoke about this with Carlos earlier this year, um, at some point early in the first semester, well, in the first quarter of the school year, I know we do semesters, but let's just call it the first quarter to make it more easy. About a month in, the students will have to have a design brief of their actual product along with their problem statement and everything and then that i'll compile all those problem statements into one thing and that can be sent out to the alumni and if anyone is interested in mentoring and has experience within this field it would be greatly appreciated if that help comes back in so the students will create a deliverable that can be looked at and can be read upon or if it's easier i can make the boys make a video or something that's a more palatable 
way of actually getting that information out and then the students can get that out. And that's input that I can have from, from you all. Is it better a video? Is it better just a written design brief? Is it better just a, a kind of elevator pitch type email? What would be the best way of getting that information out? Um, and then when it comes to other classes, it just depends on the projects. And we're thinking of starting a STEAM website that has kind of updates on all these current projects so that if someone just wants to drop in and see something that interests them, they can come and communicate with Carlos or one of us and go through there. And I would guess the point people for these projects would be one of us, if you can get to us directly, but if you can't get to us, which usually you can, but if for whatever reason, Carlos can be our, our intermediary or anything like that. Hey, listen, we're, we're hoping now that things are opening up in September because our goal was to do it this year. Pero, pero ahora sí, the full throttle with that. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm more than happy to be that point man. And like you and I, Pete, I mean, and I uh, have discussed, we've been wanting to do this for a while. So hopefully, yeah, we're ready to go in September, dude. Yeah. So I'll op uh, open it up. And if anyone else had any other questions they wanted to uh, jump in with. Good afternoon. My name is Danny. I'm class of 93. And uh, my my son is now wrapping up seventh grade, Sebastian. Um, I just I just jumped in because I have nothing to do with with uh, the, the, the various uh, science groups, alumni science group. Um, I'm in the world of, of finance or business. And um, I just I wanted to hear the uh, the topic and hear you guys talk and also say hi to Mr. Silva. I, I contacted her uh last year i'm 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 i'm, I'm behind this um this uh, i guess effort with uh with faith and science mm -hmm. uh, so it's something to uh combat the false narrative that it's you know faith versus science uh religion versus reason this this sort of thing and uh i'm not going to get into it now um because COVID has postponed everything by a year and a half but uh, suffice to say that um, this is this is wonderful. Um, what I'm doing sort of behind the scenes. Uh, when it's ready, I uh, I want Belen to to have a protagonist role in in, in what I'm trying to do. Um, but it's ultimately to create a um, sort of a a a a, um, a reward destination conference for the top students of theology and sciences. Uh, and in some schools, it could be the same student or students getting the best grades in theology and sciences. And, uh, you know, the big push is, is um, you know, we, we don't support scientism, but we fully embrace science. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to hear what, I, putting that aside, I am, I am very genuinely interested in, in hearing what the center has to offer. Now I understand it a bit more. Uh, I only see it from, you know, downstairs and I look up and I see the, the, the beautiful facade. And I'm like, I wonder what happens in there. So now I have a better idea and I can relate this to my son and my wife. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you guys are doing an incredible uh, effort. Uh, I also um, I also think it's pretty neat that Miami has been sort of um, thrown into the limelight regarding tech and startups and VCs and whatnot. And, and as you know, uh, I know of, you know, two Belen alums that are very uh, plugged in. Uh, one is a Mayor uh, Francis Suarez. He's he's kind of been a poster uh, person for this uh, push. Uh, Damien Berumio, he's also very much, um, you know, plugged in. So I'm, I'm sure there's other alumni that the more they know about what you're doing, I think they're going to take a sincere interest. And actually, maybe that that can lead into a question from us for you. Um, a lot of what I'm hearing right now is seeing what's happening here and getting it out to the alumni and getting it out to the public. And we do Instagram posts. And I wanna say that's our main method of, I don't want to say advertising of um, communication right now. And that's how our communications go out with, of what's happening. But would there be a better method that gets to alumni, uh, whether it be the website that we mentioned before, whether it be a supplementary newsletter, whether it be something like uh, along those lines, what would be a good method for you all to see what's happening and to take an in interest on, in what the projects are going on here? 
I think it's I'm going to I'm going to say a very general comment, but you know, us guys were very visual, and when you when you started giving that that tour of the facilities, that was pretty impressive. You know, because I still think a lot of people haven't even been inside. They, they don't even know what it looks like inside. It's like a, a black box. Um, so I I don't know. If there's some sort of um. Even... No, but one one of one of our ideas is to finally have an open house uh, type cocktail, which again we had that planned for a uh, last year. Now the plan is to start to do it this year to invite the specific engineering departments, uh, all, all everything associated with STEAM and and a lot to, 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 to see this. And, uh, and that way we can communicate. That's one of the ways we can communicate, um, you know, to alumni. And, uh, and, and then that partnership, like Peter was saying, we, 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 do, we will communicate with them as well and through our mentorship program and, and so on. We, we in, our, in our, uh, our professional sections, that's, that's our, our plan to, to get to these guys. So, so now that things are opening up and, and there, there's more contact allowed uh, and, and so on, we, we, we plan on, on, on getting this information and all these, these Did we lose them? No, he froze. Uh, opportunities for alumni to be part of, uh, of this more robust and make us more, have them more involved. Carlos, may, may, if, if I may say so, you think yeah. it's a good idea to, uh, I'm not, you know, to use uh, to use some of these sort of, you know, trending topics in the world of, of tech, like, you know, AI, automation, you know, uh, uh, blockchain, and, you know, that sort of seems to pique everyone's interest. And then once you have them in there in, in, at the Guisueta, you know, center, then obviously you open the whole menu and you show them everything you're doing. But I, I wonder if, you know, it's necessary to use these sort of catchy, you know, buzzwords that are trending now and then that gets them in the door, so to speak. No, yeah, From a student yeah. level, it be, um, we actually were working on an AI system. And you're going to laugh, but again, these are Belen boys. Um, they wanted to design a robot that can cook hamburgers. <laughs> that was their thing. Uh, they wanted to do that this year because there were no competitions. Um, but in doing that, I said, OK, let's try to leverage this somehow so that they learn something interesting. And they started working on machine learning. They started working on trying to have a system that could visually detect a patty that was uncooked. And they figured out how difficult it was to get there. So we want to get the students into these trending topics. The thing is the technical expertise needed, um, we're building the program to get them there. Let's, let's say it that way. So having the students, they understand blockchain and that they can trade Dogecoin because Elon Musk tweeted about it and they'll make 200% profits on it. <laughs> but they don't understand Dogecoin and what blockchain is and how the technology works and how they can leverage that technology and code it. But as the program grows, hopefully that's where, that's where we want our boys to be, that we have that one kid that uses the blockchain to win the coding hackathon. And then that's where the spotlight comes in or we get the kids to make that burger robot. And as silly as it sounds, when you start presenting what it actually does, it's an, it's an actual robust program that the students can use. And then on top of that, as mentors building, helping the students build soft skills. That's one of our biggest things because even if they don't get the full technical aspect because it is a senior in college level course or level technique, they know how to present what they did and they know how to present what they did wrong and they know how to present how they were planning on fixing it. And that's how, that's the, the interdisciplinary program that we're trying to build here. Right. Well, Adriana and Peter, uh, I'm, Luis, I'm the uh, president of the Alumni Association. Um, I think that one of the things that I've observed today, and to your question of, you know, how can we get the word out, is I think that this this particular uh, meeting right here, I mean, the leadership of the Alumni Association is here. For the most part, you know, you have Roly with the mentoring, and myself, and Carlos, and Oscar with the CEO at Beans, and Derek Verona. From, so you have four or five professional sections. You know, sometimes you don't have to, you know, blast out there a bunch of information that, you know, we're overwhelmed by it, but just the, the fact that, you know, we, we, uh, we, we embrace the concept and like Carlos very well said, you know, we're opening up, you will see now that they'll come and they'll tell you, here we are. And the problem is you couldn't see them because they couldn't come here to see you. And, and now that they, like Carlos says, that they're here to see you, 
you'll see a, a difference in, in obtaining the resources. I guarantee you that these five or six people that were here today will, will, uh, will, will do whatever they can to have this happen. I myself took part in the tours yesterday. I am from the class of 76, so I never studied in that building, in the, the little building, any building there. I studied in the one that they tore down last week, um, which the lab was consisted of a sink and three frogs in for help formaldehyde for seven years uh, with water, air, and gas. And the only thing that worked on the sink was the water. So we were, our jaws were dropping when we, when we saw the tour. So you're going to get support, I guarantee you. Thank you. Um, one question, or what you said earlier about uh, creating a newsletter or how to, uh, uh, so, so uh, an idea that occurs to me, because I, I would love to know just the, when you mentioned about those hallmarks, when, when they finally have that first review and their idea is announced, maybe that could be like a little news flash uh, that, that, that's out there. And then that, that's a point where we can expect as a professional section that that's the season that we could maybe expecting an email from one of the from one of the students regarding some one of the problems on their design table, uh, and then we can get you know anybody in, in my section that is somehow related to arts entertainment or media. I would imagine more media than anything else or or uh, design for sure. Uh, Charlie Galerin comes to mind. Uh, so um, if somehow during that season we can expect to be in connection more intensely i think it might help to create a sort of like a structure to the year and to and, and then we can follow up with subsequent you know highlights and, and then at the year we all know what what to expect and one thing that beams wants to do is this beams month and uh our first uh which is uh around tombola time that we we kind of Carlos, like we kind of commandeer the gallery, uh, and and we take over and, and we 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 hold a uh, an art exhibit, uh, but we also try to balance out with other presentations, and we try to do a scholarship. So when you mentioned about a reward situation, did, uh, Danny, you mentioned about some kind of reward, um, uh, some some kind of um, or, or Peter did. I'm sorry, uh, some kind of reward, and I'm thinking. That could being in cahoots with uh, with with uh, with you guys could be a way of inc incorporating the Beams Month uh, scholarship with your pro with your projects. So just putting that out there now, so we can maybe follow up on that at at a, at a future date. That sounds great. Roll, you have a question? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted uh, to get a question. Um, you know, I I guess I'm curious. Is it, um, you know, is one of the goals or is it like a conscious goal to kind of have students going into more diverse career paths, you know, engineering, technology, um, you know, is, is that something that, you know, is a conscious effort? I hope it's not into incendiary or question, but, you know, I know that people watching this later might be curious. Uh, yes, it is definitely a, a conscious effort and it is something that we try to incorporate um, especially in, so for example, in the middle school STEAM club, we had um, during engineers week, we had a, um, I had the students present on different types of engineering. And um, basically through like my middle school STEAM club, I've been exposing the students to different aspects of engineering, different aspects of design, so that they can get an idea of things that they like. Um, and I have had um, parents come to me and tell me, oh, my son used to wanna be a YouTuber, and now he wants to be an electrical engineer. Um, so it's something that um, it, it is our goal. We want to be able to expose the students to um, different things that they might not have realized. Yes, they might want to go to med school, but there's different ways of going to med school other than just getting a um, biology degree. So um, we're trying to next year, uh, we weren't able to this year, but next year we want, want to have um, events for the students where they can um, kind of get a feel for different things. Um, we want to incorporate something that is uh, like coding with art. 
Um, so to incorporate more of that um, uh, literal coding and art and bringing those two together, um, but just to open their eyes as to different fields that they can go into and things that they might not have realized that they actually do really love to do um, because they think that they want to go to law school or they want to go to med school. Um, so it, we are consciously trying to um, open up the doors for those students. Um, so that's another way that we can use your help um, is that students can see the different careers that exist, that they can, um, you know, talk to you and um, see what, what you guys do. Um, and through different activities that we can have them do, they can kind of get a feel for um, the way that things run in, you know, in digital arts and entrepreneurship in, um, in just about anything, any field. Um, so we are trying to expose the students to see if we can spark that um, creativity, spark that love of something that they didn't think they loved previously. Awesome. I, I mean, the first thing coming to mind right now is just like a uh, take a balanced student to work day. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Something to throw out there for future future conversations. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hand it back to Carlos. I think you know. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, a I want to thank you guys. The, the The tour was great. There's a couple of rooms there that you showed that I haven't seen yet. So I'm gonna go tomorrow <laughs> and, and 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 check it out. Um, no, Adriana and, and and Pete, thank you so much for 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 this. Um, the nice thing, again, this is going to go in our YouTube uh, channel. We have an alumni YouTube channel uh, where we can, people, alumni can see it and, and uh, at their leisure. Uh, it was something that, that, that we wanted to get done and, and let's get this momentum. I think we, like, like the, uh, Danny said and then Chris said and uh, Oscar and Rolly, we're all in agreement here uh, that, that you will get the involvement. You will get the interest, uh, uh, especially now that things are opening up. So. You know, I'm looking forward to it, uh, and I'm sure the alumni are. So, wanted to thank you for taking the time and, and doing this. And uh, you guys did a great job. All right, so see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Let's everybody. Good night. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night.